Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eglin, and today we are going to talk about database transactions. And actually, when it comes down to, to working with databases, transactions might be one of the, the most important topics that you have because that's one of the real reasons why we rely on databases. So let's look at, I'm going to use the classic example of transactions, which is the bank transaction. And if you understand how this bank transaction has to work, you can get a very good understanding of what transactions are. So here is my little bitty banking database, which has a few things in here. I have a transaction log. I have, a, I, uh, and that's actually what I'm going to log transactions with. Now, in many databases, transactions have an automated logging capability, but I'm going to just demonstrate some explicit logging here so that I can, so I can also demonstrate a few things that might occur in a transaction uh, that you would want to keep track of when you're doing transactions. The rest of the database is really straightforward. I have an accounts and I have customers. The customers have accounts. So the classic case that I'm going to work here is transferring money from one account to another account. And when you're doing that, that transaction is actually a two-step process. You go into one account and you delete the money and then you go into the other account and you insert the money. Okay, Really what you're doing is a little bit of math. You take an account and you subtract a certain amount from its balance and you add it to the other account. Now, here's why transactions are so important. Suppose step one occurs, you subtract the money and the computer crashes. Well, guess what? You just made money disappear. That would be a very bad thing. So the concept of transactions is going to show how we protect this. Okay. Now, as I'm going through this, I'm actually going to talk about something that we call the ACID test. And the ACID test has four parts to it. Um, and actually, ACID stands for each of the four parts. So the first part is atomicity. Atomicity. And what atomicity says is that, okay, if you're doing a transaction, it either everything works or nothing works. So if one part of the transaction fails, the entire transaction fails, and the database is left right where it started from, nothing changed. Okay, that's one, atomicity. Two, consistency. Okay, the database is starting in a valid state. Okay, everything is good, all is happy, everything's working according to its rules. Okay, and those rules can be lots of things. You can have triggers and cascading select statements and constraints for specific things. All those different things can be going on, but you start in a consistent, a valid state, and you end in a valid state. All the database rules are met. An example of being inconsistent could be something such as a violation of a key or something like that. We don't, that is not allowed in the asset constraints. Three, isolation. Okay, isolation basically says, you know, a transaction may have multiple steps, okay? So, if one of these steps is different if you do it before step two, okay, these steps need to be independent of, of each other. Let's see if I can go back and make that a little bit more, a little bit better to understand. Okay, so, and actually, let's just do it this way. Let's say we've got two transactions that are going on at once, okay? Because one of the reasons why you have transaction management is to deal with concurrency. Concurrency is when different people are accessing the database at the same time. Okay, so you're saying that here's a transaction being performed by user A and here's a transaction being performed by user B. Okay, those transactions have got to be isolated from each other. That's really the isolation. In other words, T1, or transaction 1, has got to be able to execute as if it was serial, as if it was separate in time and in execution of T2, the trans other transaction. So they're isolated from each other. No mixing. And the last one's really straightforward, durability. Okay, um, What happens if you know, you're starting the transaction and boom, power is lost? Okay, And the database crashes. Well, that would be bad. So, what I mean by durable is that somehow what's going on, at least a valid state at the beginning or a valid state at the end, um, has to be saved. Okay, so 
Durable means there's a permanence to whatever occurs. And when you take durability and you put it back with atomicity, it's either all or nothing. You're either going to be in a perfectly good state stored and durable at the beginning of the transaction or a perfectly good state as of the end of the transaction. So ACID, and you do have some reading on this that help you out with you know different examples of how this whole thing works. But let's just take a specific example of a stored procedure which does execute a transaction. So we'll kind of go in here. So let's say here's my, this is a, the bank account transaction and I'm really going to do one thing. I'm going to go, and, and this is a, and I've really gone through a lot of steps to show, okay, when you're doing this you have a level of being very careful about what you do. I have a from account, a to account, and an amount. So I'm just going to move some money from one account to the other account. Well, in this case, what I'm doing is first I'm going to check to see, um, hey, does the from account exist? Okay, if it exists, we can continue on. That's that first part, okay, and that's just a simple count. Then the next thing I do is I check whether the two account exists, and if it does, I continue on. Otherwise, I'm going to raise an error. Um, I haven't started my transaction yet. I just am doing some checking ahead of time. This is going to help me meet that acid test, though. So um, I am going to log the transaction. So in this case, I declare a transaction ID, and I actually log the transaction uh, attempt. So um, the logging the transaction attempt I do with a separate store procedure, but it's fairly straightforward that I have the from account to account and the amount, and all I'm doing is I'm logging it um, into that specific um, into that database. And I do that through a stored procedure. All right, the next thing I'm going to check is a pre-check. I still haven't started my transaction. It's a pre-check where I'm going to check to see if the from account balance actually has sufficient funds to do this. Now, here's where you can have a little bit of fun. Before I start the transaction, I'm checking to see if I got money. And if I got money, I'm going to go ahead. But that doesn't mean that while I'm doing the transaction, somebody else can't concurrently jump into the database, pull the money out. Okay, now, there are ways to stop this, and I'll, and I'll actually talk about those. But now I'm actually starting the transaction itself. Okay, so what I'm doing is I go to the accounts, and I set the balance equal to the balance minus the amount from the from account, and I check to see if there's an error that occurred. And if there is an error, I'm going to roll back the transaction. Now, what would raise an error there? Well, let's look at something that might cause an error to occur. You wanted to prevent the person from being able to take out money, and they can only take out money through a, through a transaction anyway, but being able to take out money and getting the account below zero and doing this. Well, how would you do that with the table? Well, you can set up a constraint on the amount of uh, in, in that account, so basically the value of the account, so it has to be greater than zero. If you try to take out funds that make it drop below zero, it will raise an error. And if it raises an error, here's what happens. Now I began the transaction here, and if this occurs, I'm going to roll back. Basically, it means I'm going to go back here and I'm done. Okay, transaction did not occur. We're back in the state that we started from. Okay, now you will say, well, maybe you're not exactly in the state that you started from because earlier you did actually log a transaction attempt. Well, I'm still in a valid state, and I'll show you why. Because of the way I designed the database, you're logging that an, a transaction was attempted, not that a transaction was completed. So we're actually saying we at least started a transaction. That's what the database is telling you. So you are still in a valid state. That table isn't trying to tell you that this is a transaction that occurred. It tells you that it's a transaction attempt. Well, the next one that you want to do is, okay, now we want to go ahead and move the money. So we're going to set the balance equal to the balance plus the amount. If something happens, it can't get in there. Okay, an error is going to pop up. We're going to roll back the transaction, and you're done. Okay, Tr nothing at nothing happens. Everything goes back to the start of the begin transaction, and nothing occurs. And the last thing that we're going to do, which is why I said the transaction log is actually going to be able to handle this, is that I'm going to update the transaction log, and I'm going to set successful equal to one, basically saying that hey, the transaction did get there. Okay, okay, except that if that doesn't work. I get an error and it's going to go back again, roll back, nothing happens. And then my final statement before the end of the procedure, 
is the commit the transaction. So nothing's been committed yet until it gets to that commit. Once it gets to that commit, the transaction is committed, shows over, transaction is done, and we've met all the conditions of A, C, I, and D, the acid test. So that gives you in a very good nutshell that whole concept of what we mean by transactions. Now with um, what you need, you need to have a good understanding of, of how this whole transaction works as far as meeting the acid test. Now, some of the gut level details of how those things like rolling back and committing and having durability and the management of the database to do that, that's beyond the scope of what we're learning in the database, this database class. But those are all parts of the database. The ability to have the commit, roll back, and begin of the transactions is handled by the database management system. So what you have here is the ability to meet all the constraints necessary to have transaction management in the database. Hope this was useful to you. Good programming. See you later.